hands on. It didn't have consent. So it would never have been in their minds. It just would have been a fantastic opportunity. Anyway, um, uh, I didn't hear back from Dr. Brundtland because uh, she was asked to resign. So um, she left the World Health Organization after she'd put this notice up on her door because the World Health Organization, if you actually look into it, is um, predominantly funded by industry, um, which of course um, means that they don't actually want to have studies in places like New Zealand which actually show that the um, exposure is far too high. Um, but I did get, she must have sent my letter on to Professor Beale in the United States who was head of a research team looking at increased cluster harm near the Lookout Mountain, Colorado, Atena. And he'd been given um, environmental funding to actually run that study and he wrote to me and um, he actually asked me to try and find a researcher to set up the similar study which would be paid by the US environmental people here in Christchurch and I approached all sorts of medical people trying to get this underway and they all just ran a mile. They just couldn't cope with it. And Dr. Professor Beal also wrote to me and told me that my radio frequency hearing was a gift from God to empower me in our battle for justice and that I could always tell when the emissions were strongest and where they focused to. When I actually wrote back to Professor Beal and asked him to supply me with a return address, I said this is not a very welcome gift because unfortunately it's like being a witness at murders and not being able to prevent the crime due to industry's control of governments and the standards. Oh, so so it's, not, it's not much fun to actually find that wherever you react, the, the, the history showing increased death, suicide, violence, murders, and you can't stop it happening. But he didn't give me a return address to God, so I'm still left with this affliction. <laughs> He just wrote back, ha ha. <laughs> he sounds a very nice man, and I know the research that they've done at Look at Mountain, Colorado, is actually um, showing uh, exact same thing as what we've got: clusters of serious adverse effects where the frequencies are focused, and the same things coming out of Israel and all over the world. Penny, you told me that uh, you experienced increased radio frequency allergic reaction when the uh, major earthquakes have occurred in Christchurch. Can you explain this effect a little bit? Yes, it's actually quite interesting because I've talked to um, a, a, an, an electrical engineer here about um, that I suddenly uh, found this increased allergic reaction and he said, oh, well, what happens when the earthquakes happen is the plates grind together and they actually release electromagnetic waves. He said, that must be what you're picking up. And I said to him, well, it doesn't actually quite seem like that because I'm only experiencing um, this radiofrequent allergic reaction in a, a certain areas and they're always where the frequencies are actually focused towards where the epicenter of the quakes have been. I said, if I was experiencing it everywhere, it would be completely different. And um, I'd just like to explain what actually has happened to me. Um, for most of 2010, I've been able to work at my farm because they seem to have lifted the angles. They've raised the angles of the FEM and um, the power has either been turned down. But the day prior to the September 7.1 quake, I was helping my daughter up at her West Milton farm, which is approximately 60 k southwest of the radio, north, uh, southwest of the radio tower. And I'd been up there helping her before, and um, I had suffered a little bit of um, RF allergic reaction, but not like I did that day. I'd only been there a quarter of an hour, and I said, I'm sorry, I'm starting to swell up again. I have to leave. I can't breathe. Um, and I'll go back down to Avonhead, which is 20 k back to Christchurch, go back to Christchurch. And the minute I got away from there, I started to feel better. It was like the frequency was very focused and very powerful, through where she lived, which is near West Melton. Now, if you follow that frequency line on, it actually comes um, to the epicentre at uh, Darfield Horata. And I didn't know that at the time. I went, I went home. This was the day before the September 4th quake. I went to my farm. I worked at my farm. I was absolutely 100% no problem. At half past four in the morning on the 4th, we had the 7.1 quake. And um, again, I didn't feel any allergic reaction until I got... Um, I went back to my farm, and my farm, there wasn't much damage at my farm. I went down to, um, I lived two k's further down to the coast, which is um, northeast of the radio tower, and I immediately just like drove into this high-pitched whining noise, like 
someone rubbing their finger, wet finger around the top of a crystal glass. It was just absolutely horrific. It was just this whining noise. And the, the effects, where the whining noise was of the earthquake was horrific. So where there was no whining noise, I didn't have, there were no effects of the earthquake, and the earthquake um, was very bad where the whining noise was. And I went back up to my farm, I got back to my farm, and again, I had no RF effect at all, the whining noise had stopped. And hundreds and hundreds of birds had come into my farm and were covering the fields like they were a refugee camp for birds. It was quite <laughs> extraordinary, absolutely extraordinary. Did, did you experience September quake harm uh, where you were living at, at Avonhead and or at Ohiria Farm? Well, um, it was obviously, it was a pretty good, what they call old Bucky gave us all a really good shake-up. Um, but there was no obvious harm seen between Avonhead and uh, very little harm at my farm, approximately 10 k's east across the city. But when I drove down along the river, which, which you would have thought would have been badly affected by the quake, which runs sort of in a big loop around my farm, Again, there was no harm until you actually got down to Spencerville and to a place called Brooklyn's. Now, the licences I've got actually show the frequencies focused directly through there. And when I got back to my farm, my neighbours actually, the radio tower is, is like 800 metres up on the, on the higher land from my farm. And they said, oh, the radio tower's taken quite a whack. And I looked up and here it was tilting over to the, to the, to the north, northwest. Oh. It was tilted. And when I went up there, you could actually see, I mean, this was about six hours after the quake, but the a huge area of liquefaction up there. And the neighbour had taken a photograph of the big concrete block that held the horses, and it had lifted right out of the ground with the liquefaction. It was like a huge, big volcanic um, eruption had lifted one end of the horse right out of the ground. Now, as the water receded, the concrete block gradually sank back down into the ground. And for the next week, um, every day, night and morning, you'd see these men out there ratcheting the hawser wires to try and straighten up the tower. But it was quite extraordinary. So it had obviously rocked tremendously in the earthquake and then tilted over. Penny, the, the Christchurch quake, which happened on September the 4th, 2010, for our US listeners, uh, was originally reported as a 7.4 magnitude and at a depth of 33 kilometres deep. And Penny, as I said earlier, this evidence disappeared from GeoNet's website within 12 hours. Now, okay. Flashes, flashes in the sky were reported south at the time of the quake and yep. before the stated times. Coincidentally, the satellite data for the time of the earthquake is missing off the Met Service oh. uh, uh, MetView website. Right. Now, I repeatedly asked why this data was missing and had no response to my questions until I recently blogged this on Northland New Zealand Chemtrail Watch. I received a response from a Met Service employee who spends a lot of time on the Northland New Zealand Chemtrail Watch site refuting the work there. Now, mm -hmm. This gentleman stated that the Japanese Meteorological Agency had taken the service down for routine maintenance. Now, I had to wait a year for that reply, and it had to come via a public blog. Uh, he has stated to me that the Met Service and MetView never got any requests as to why that really? data was missing from me, which is utter nonsense. So um, this particular gentleman... Um, is obsessed with trolling these um, chemtrail blogs. Now, did you experience September quake harm where, where you're currently living? Or like, did you have any liquefaction at your farm uh, after the September uh, quake? I, I actually find what you've just said to me extremely interesting because I didn't know all of that stuff. But yeah. what um, the um, when when the um, scientists were actually um, looking at at the issue, they, they were actually saying that it was um, very odd because the um, effects, the magnitude of the harm to the to the um, area was um, was a was a great puzzle because the huge energy was released in relation to the magnitude of the quakes is what they're actually saying. But you're actually saying that the quake might actually have been bigger than what they've actually reported. They said the September quake was more than 10 times the energy of a quake this size. So that's extremely interesting what you've actually uh, found as to why they would 
originally reported as 7.8 and then bring it down to a 7.1, which is quite a substantial difference. But why they would report 7. it as 7.4. 7.4 and 33 kilometres deep. Now this is... This so what, is do, what, was the, what was the depth established at the end? At the end, uh, 10 kilometres deep. Now, oh, uh, really? watching uh, all the HARP data, you know, there's, uh, it looks as though quakes that are placed between 10 kilometres, these shallow ones, and 33 okay. kilometres deep are uh, electromagnetically pulsed. But anyway, right. on that, there's, there's more information, actually, that I have on that, Penny. And let's get to some of the coincidences uh, down the track a little bit. Okay, uh, around the okay, but right. So you asked me about the liquefaction at my indeed, farm. Well, I when I first got there, um, I didn't think there was any harm at all. But when I actually got up to where the radio tower was, which is the highest point of my farm, it was like a great big, huge cloverleaf pattern. Um, it was only to the southwest. It was quite a lot of liquefaction, about 300 metres from the radio tower, only where the, it actually focuses southwest across the city. And there was no harm at all on my, on my lower ground, none at all. It was quite extraordinary. Um, and then later on, um, when um, I sort of went to see different people around the area, because I'm involved in the uh, uh, Residents Association, it was quite extraordinary that the only quake damage within five kilometres of the radio tower was where the licences show the FM focused and it only occurred at 300 metres, 800 metres, 2 k's and 5 k's. So it was only like a big wave bouncing and that was exactly the same distance as the National Radiation Laboratory had monitored in 1999. And it, it was only where the frequencies focused. And the quakes for the next few months only occurred, the aftershocks again only occurred where the frequencies focused. It was quite extraordinary. What happened to the area tower after the land was uh, liquefied so badly when the tower... Well, I mean, we thought that it would probably have to be taken down about, um, because it, 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 I mean, the liquefaction around it was just like a sea of water. It was just, and the land had all sunk. Um, but they men came and ratcheted it up, and then there were lots of men in black came and walked all around and obviously had a discussion, and then they continued to transmit the FM and the AM and the, and the microwaves. And um, we were all very worried because with all the aftershocks that were continuing, obviously the tower had been weakened or the ground underneath had been loose.